Hey, it's Michael from Mark Smarter. In this episode of How to Dynamo, I'm going to show you how you can use Dynamo to center room location points. Now, oftentimes we want our room tags to be located in the center of our rooms. And as long as no one's moved the room location point or we haven't changed the room dimensions, this usually works out great. But more often than not, the room location points have wandered around and they're no longer in the center of the room. So today we're going to use the room's geometry to find the room's center point, and then we're going to set the room's location point to this center point. Now, one thing to note is that there are nodes that will do this for you automatically, and I'm going to show you that um, one node specifically in the rhythm package. But it's useful to know how to do this operation because we can apply it to other applications. Say you want to find the center of a selection of furniture elements or find the center of a wall. The concept that we're going to look at applies to those use cases as well. All right, you ready to get started? Let's switch on over to Dynamo and get this done. I'm here in Revit and I have a sample model set up. And you, if I hover over these rooms here, you can see that their location points are kind of all over the map. They're not centered in the room. Uh, they're not consistent from room to room. So if I were to go and tag my rooms, I'm going to tag all not tagged. Scroll down here to rooms you'll notice that when they get placed, they're all over the place. Like they're they're following the room location point, but the room location points aren't consistent. So it looks like a hot mess. What I wanna do is I want to center all of those room location points inside of the room. That way when I use that tag tool, it's gonna tag all of the rooms consistently and they're gonna be looking nice, looking good, kind of centered, aligned, all that good stuff. So let's switch into Dynamo and we're gonna go ahead and create a new script that will do this centering for us. I don't wanna have to do that manually, that sounds really awful. So I'm gonna write a script that's gonna do the work for me. Now we're gonna start by selecting all of our rooms. So I'm gonna go to Revit Selection and I'm gonna use the All Elements of Category. And to specify the category, uh, I might be using this script in different versions of Dynamo, so I'm going to hard code the category. I'm going to write, use a code block, and I'm going to just type rooms as my category name. And then I'm going to use a node in the categories um, section here. So I'm going to go Revit Elements Category. I'm going to use the by name node. So I'm going to pass in my code block with rooms as the name of the category. The by name node is going to return the actual category and I can plug that into all elements of category. So that will ensure that the category is consistent. Sometimes if you use the category node uh, that I can find under Revit selection, uh, this node right here, categories, uh, the selected category can jump around if you're opening up Dynamo in different version or that Dynamo script in different versions of Revit. So just a little tip. Now this gives me, uh, let me set this to be automatic. And this is going to give me uh, all of the rooms in the model. And there's a bunch of rooms here. Now, once I have all of the rooms, what I want to do is I want to get the bounding box of the room. And the bounding box is an abstract kind of geometric representation of that room. And one thing to note is the bounding box is actually kind of orthogonal or aligned to the view. So if you have a room that is uh, not square or not rectangular, the bounding box is going to be an approximation of those, the minimum point and the maximum point. So if we switch back into our model, you can see we have this L-shaped room here. So the bounding box for that room, and I'll just do this as a model line, is going to take the minimum point here and then the maximum point. So you'll notice that there's area of the bounding box that's not inside of the room. And again, it's just a, a abstract representation of a box around that particular element. So if my model or these rooms were rotated, the box, the bounding box for those rooms is still going to be kind of aligned with this, the actual view right here. So something to keep in mind as we go through this. All right, back into Dynamo. To get the bounding box, I'm going to go to Revit Elements, Element, all the way down here, and I'm going to use a node that's called bounding box. So I click on that and I connect all elements of category to our bounding box node. 
Now you'll notice this gives me a warning and it says object reference not set to an instance of an object. So I'm going to take a look at my output here and I can see I'm getting some bounding boxes but I'm also getting a whole lot of null values. So if I switch into my model I'm going to open up my room schedule and what I'm seeing is I have a number of rooms that have an area here and then some of them that are not placed and then others that are not enclosed. So I kind of have a mess going on with my rooms. So I could go through and I could just select these and I could delete you know, those rooms that, that are not placed uh, or not enclosed. The other thing I can do is I can set my script up to filter out any of those rooms that are not enclosed or you know, basically have an area equal to zero. So I'm going to go in Revit again. I'm going to go to Elements and we're going to look at the Room some subcategory. So here I'm going to take the Area node and I'm going to plug that into my All Elements of Category. So this is going to output the area of all the rooms. And I can see here when I look at the area and then when I look at the Element Bounding Box, the ones that have null values this is at index four through nine, also have an area equal to zero. So there's no, they're not inside of a room, so there's no way it can calculate the area. So I can use this information here from room area to filter out all of those not enclosed or not placed rooms. So to do that, I'm gonna use an equal equal node. I'm just gonna do a little search for it. And we'll pull that in. And so I'm gonna take the room area I'm going to compare that and I'm going to try to find the rooms where the area is equal to zero. Like that. And this is going to return a series of true false values. So which rooms have area equal to zero and which do not. Now that I have a list of true false values, I can go to the list library. I'm going to go to modify and I can use the filter by boolean mask node. So I have my mask, that's my list of true false values. And then the list that I want to filter is the list of rooms coming out of all elements of category. So this is going to give me kind of two buckets, right? So I have a list of rooms where the area is equal to zero, and that's going to be in this in output, and then a list of rooms where the area is not equal to zero, and that's in our out output. So if I take my room area, node here. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to take a look at the rooms that are in the out output. All of these rooms have an area so their area is not equal to zero. So these are the rooms that are actually placed in the model and these are the ones that we want to then get the bounding box and, and do our centering on. So I'm going to take this element bounding box node and I'm going to disconnect it from all elements of category and instead I'm going to use our filtered list of rooms. So I'm going to pass that in here. You'll notice as soon as I do that, that warning goes away because I'm not trying to get the bounding box of a room that doesn't exist in the model. Now with the bounding box, I'm going to go up into the geometry library and I'm going to go to abstract bounding box. And there's two nodes I'm looking at here. I have min point and max point. So I'm going to add both of these to my canvas here. Now within the bounding box, I can get the minimum point, which is going to be the point in the lower left-hand corner of the bounding box, and the maximum point, which is the point on the upper right-hand corner. And you'll notice as soon as I connect those nodes, if I switch to my preview, I can see those points, min points and max points for the rooms kind of in 3D space. So it's giving me the X, Y, and Z point values for those minimum and maximum points. Now that I have the points, I can actually use them to create a line. So I'm going to connect a line from my min point to my max point. So again, in geometry, I'm going to go to curves, line, and I'm going to use the by start point end point node. So this is going to connect a line basically through my bounding box. So our start point, our end point, so now we can see that line in the preview. Now with the line, why this is useful is we can now very easily get the midpoint of that line. And that midpoint of the line is going to be our midpoint for our room. We're going to use that to set that midpoint. So let's take a look at that. We have that line. We're going to go to geometry and we'll go to curves, curve. And I'm going to use a node that's called point at parameter. So if we scroll down 
Here it is here. So we take a curve or a line and the parameter uh, is a value that ranges from zero to one. So zero represents the start point of our line and one represents the end point. So I can use a decimal value. For example, I can use 0 0.5 and that's going to get me the center point of that line. So as soon as I do that, again, we'll look at our 3D preview here. I can see there I'm, I have my lines jumping all over the place here. Uh, and then I'm getting that center point. Now, if I switch that, just, just so we know, we can test it. If I switch that parameter value, let's go to uh, 0.75, we'll see that that point that we created is now going to be in that upper uh, quarter of the line. And if we change this to 0.25, we'll see it on that, the lower section right down there. So again, we want to get the center point of the room. So we're going to set that parameter to 0 0.5. Now we have that, that basically gives us the centroid of our room. So we can use that to set that room location. So we're going to go to Revit, Elements, we're going to go down to Element. There we go. And you'll notice that there is a node here called Set Location. So we're going to set the location of our rooms, our filtered list of rooms. So that's going to be our element input. And our new location point is going to be our point at parameter. So I'm going to connect that right there. So that resets the room location point to be that kind of centroid value of the room. So if we switch into Revit, I can hover over my rooms here and it's giving me that center point. And if I even try to move that, because I still have Dynamo running in the background, it's gonna snap that point right back to the room center. So now if I go annotate, uh, sorry, I'm gonna go architecture and I'm gonna go tag room, tag all not tagged. We'll go down and choose our rooms, a room, here we go, room tag. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to place all of my room tags based on that room location point, which is now centered within the room itself. Now, there are a number of nodes, let's switch back into Dynamo, uh, that will do this for us automatically. So I can go into the, we'll take a look at the rhythm package, uh, has a couple of nodes here under uh, Revit, Elements, go down to Rooms, that will do just what we did here. So there's a couple of center room nodes here. But this process is worth knowing uh, because we can use this for a number of different applications. Let's say I wanted to find the center of some furniture or I wanted to find you know, the center of a collection of rooms or a collection of walls or a collection of elements, whatever it is. I can use this same operation here. I can get the bounding box from a group of elements, then get the midpoint using that min and max. So it's worth knowing and adding this, this kind of understanding, this collection of nodes, this group of nodes here, um, to your repertoire because, again, it can be useful in a lot of different applications. We're looking specifically at centering rooms, but again, you may come up with a, an occasion where you need to use it to find the center of something else. All right, so hope this was helpful. Let me zoom out here, give you the full picture, and uh, happy dynamoing. All right, talk to you soon.